Hello, I'm Nisha Mothra and welcome to Keys to Kismet. I am beyond honored to be sitting next to Michelin star celebrity chef Vikas Khanna, who was actually named on the top 10 lists of global chefs in the Gazette Review. His list of credentials goes on and on and on. But today I want to go beyond those credentials because this is a story of a boy from Amritsar, Punjab, who no one had heard of. And if we close our eyes, the charred smoke of an earthen stove, chula, bringing in a wave of memories. A small open courtyard with charpai, a woven bed to rest, the aroma of brewing tea, his parents' and grandmother's voices echoing in the background, muffled, yet a symphony of comfort, the rays of the golden temple warming his soul. This boy was always different and wanted to be different. He dreamt of crossing all boundaries, but who knew that this boy would one day spread the fame of Indian food globally? This is a story of that boy who fought against all odds and received love from the world. This is the story of Vikas Khanna. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Anisha. It was like reliving a moment of my own life. Oh, I've read so much about you and I know that that setting that we just described was such an important part of your childhood, an important part of your journey. And I want to start off actually by taking us back there. Tell us about your grandmother and what you learned from her. We used to call her PG. Mm -hmm. Till we grew up, we didn't even know her real name. So everybody called her PG, which means with a lot of admiration, a grandma. Um, amazing, I never met somebody so strong and somebody so culturally centered. Uh, every morning, her chants, her puja room, her cooking, and also the way she would hold, like the elders, the way she'll hold everybody's secret inside. So everything, whatever, as you spoke about in the introduction about her, so much came in my mind about her oh. and how comforting, just her presence was so comforting. comforting. And everybody felt safe in the house. Yes. <laughs> now, Vikas, you did face a challenge as, as a child. You were born with club feet. Yes. Um, I want to know, first of all, what that was. Yeah. And, and you were told that you may not even walk. Run. And I want to know what your mom said to that. <laughs> I could walk. Uh, it's a little clumsy walk because you're totally not balanced. So my feet were angled towards inside. That's what a club feet is. Right. So we never used to speak about that. You push all these things, the disabilities of the kids under the carpet. You know, that's how a middle class family operates. But later in my life, after I had something for my parents to be proud of, my mother used to tell me that, talk about that. There'll be a lot of kids who will be like you, who won't feel any hope. They'll totally feel like an outcast in their own community. Speak about it. And that was really important because I was, I think, nine days old when I had my first surgery, a correction surgery, mm -hmm. in Delhi. And I was born during the riots between India and Pakistan, so right then. And my mom takes me in a train and she, she gets, the, because doctors got really scared when they saw that the feet are totally angled to inside. And they said that, you know, he'll never be able to run. And my mom would always make a fun of it and says, oh, he doesn't need to run, he'll fly. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I thought that was so amazing that how our parents know what to tell you at the right time so you never feel you are less. Amazing. And you have flown. Flown in many ways, <laughs> because after that. Work in progress. <laughs> now, I want to know about your first business. You started a, kind of a kitty party business in, the, in your backyard, Lawrence Gardens. Um, tell us about that. And I want to know what the community thought about a boy starting a business in cooking, which was a very unconventional path Everybody had their own opinion of, obviously, we understand you're coming from a very small town and things had not evolved where people thought that a boy could make into arts field like that because there was so much of uncertainty around it that what is the respect if he does this? But people made less fun of my cooking 
because you know I, f I always feel that when people are so distracted towards a line draw a longer line <laughs> right so my cooking was a smaller thing my knitting and stitching became like my longer line because uh, to for us to have the capital to start the small catering business we got a small order to knit sweaters as a uniform for a school and that is the money uh, we used to create something in the back of our house people thought if that was cooking is not insane as compared to that you your your boy he makes sweaters <laughs> the focus shifted focus shifted i drew a longer oh, line yeah. <laughs> but it was funny when you saw people react to it because i was so proud of this because there was something i had to prove to because you know when you're born as a disabled child so you're tagged a different way it's like you know you have been stamped that you are less right. because you know parents are also petrified what happens to the child yeah. who will not confine to the boxes we've given them mm -hmm. but you've never confined to the boxes because i, I became <laughs> a rebel <laughs> yeah you know that's what happens you know that's what, and especially when you have all that passion and creativity in you you know it it has to come out i didn't know that my chacha ji realized it much more than all my family members yeah. he used to live in ireland so he comes to amritsar he sees me cooking he's saying i've never seen anybody in our family who's so focused and creative and so proud he can make a perfect bhatura look at his <laughs> paneer pakoda like every the whole coating is crust is perfect how did you figure it out yeah. my grandmom is like of course i taught him he saying no you have it's to understand it gift. comes from school he goes to this place he's making breads on the street he's different but we need to appreciate it and it's very important part of my life he takes me to delhi and takes me to morris sheraton we go there and i see a buffet at morris sheraton everything about my life changed from that buffet yeah i had never seen that food was beyond the six dishes i knew and i wanted to graduate and then he said you need to educate the chefs who are doing this the who become the top they are educated so But that sparked something in you that something told me that um there's a much bigger career mm mm-hmm. i can be a part of a much bigger ecosystem and and you overcome came so many challenges along the way tell us about the day that i know the roof on your catering business was broken you had said that even the doors of the golden temple were closed it was a day that seemed it seemed to be a bad day but i feel like it was that day that also sparked you to to just do something different tell us about that day my brother said maybe something bigger is there for your life maybe something much bigger is waiting for you and you know this is this i'm talking about this 2000 and that time there was some construction going on at the golden temple so every evening after my banquets i used to go to golden temple matha dekhne ke liye and i go there and the main door is there's a construction going on so the, the door was closed first time i saw that entrance was closed i'm like wow every door is closed for me and uh, then you later in your life you realize that those doors were closed because a much bigger world was opening for you and you know you have to console yourself in so many ways and i went to american embassy and uh, i got my visa and i came to america in 2000 why did you decide to come here uh jonathan livingston seagull and uh, samran garfunkel i fell in love with samran garfunkel um their song boxer and which was written in new york city that song boxer had such a deep impression on me that that lonely boy comes to this big city in the cold winters exactly what the song was happened to me in real life mm -hmm. what do you think poverty or getting to that low point teaches you it makes you stronger mm -hmm. if you don't let it break you it was almost like that i'm reliving my childhood where everybody is making fun of you mm -hmm. in the classroom and you say I'm going to be stronger. I'm my mother says I'm there to fly. I'm all those things which were in my mind I had to use that kind of I had to really activate that part of my childhood to survive this. Well, Vikas, you went from being at the rescue mission in 2000 to getting a standing ovation at the J James Beard house in 2004. You're right. What a transition. Yeah. So, <coughs> but After this break we're going to hear more from Vikas about his incredible journey. So more after the break.
We're back with Michelin star chef Vikas Khanna, whose journey from Amritsar to the U.S. is one of dreams and determination. <laughs> he now owns and operates restaurants across the world, uh, hosts of TV shows, very popular TV shows, recently the judge of Master Chef, yeah, I've been doing it for 13 years. which has a cult following. Absolutely. Uh, he's just doing it all, basically. I mean, we would need the whole show to go over all of your credentials and all the amazing things that you're doing. When we left before the break, we talked about how you did have to go to the rescue mission your first year in the U.S. Um, and then you went in, from that year, 2000, to 2004, getting a standing ovation at the James Beard House. Yes. I was cooking at the Beard House on 23rd August, it was called Taste of India. And this is the first time I saw that Indian food to be appreciated like that. It was all sold out event. And when I went upstairs, everybody stood up and applauded. And somebody told me to say something. You know, you're signing an apron which has names of Daniel Bulud and Eric Repair and John George. It's, you're signing next to them. You know, at that time, it was very surreal. It, is for Must me. Have been, yes. And when they asked me to say something and I couldn't say a word. And my <laughs> sister was next to me and she says, you know, you're going to conquer the world, but you need to speak up. <laughs> but it's overwhelming, right? I remember the next day she sends me a, that time, you know, it was only messages. And she sent me a message that go and bloody learn English. <laughs> 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 was that was that the reason why you didn't want to speak? Because said, you thought your English was not uh, up to par? Less confidence because mm -hmm. you you know when you're working in steel kitchens, you are come sometimes I would say that you're socially not very appropriate mm -hmm. and you don't have to need to communicate with people so much. But this was I felt this was a life changing in so many ways. Mm -hmm. That you were there and people talked about your cooking and yes, I did went to school and uh, I did train a lot in English, but mm -hmm. it helps you to tell your story when you can communicate. And things begin to change, and 2005 we published the first book. And, and that's one thing that you could speak the most perfect English, but if it's not from the heart, then that communication isn't as effective as what you do. Okay, I'll take this as a compliment. <laughs> so that's one thing I have to say for sure. Now, you are the man behind Janoon Restaurant. I, I helped start it, and I was there for six years. Six years. And was it in those six years that you got the Michelin, Michelin star? Every year. Six consecutive six years. Six consecutive years. Janoon got Michelin star. Michelin star. Wow. What was it like getting your first Michelin star? You're touching a very emotional chord in my heart. <laughs> Now things are changing, but you know, when history is being written, you do not understand how to connect the dots. In 1991, there was a wall in our library which had all the Michelin star chefs from France predominantly, and they were all white. So I asked the question that why is there no Indian chef here? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, you just focus on working for them. So somehow in a subconscious mind, we were told that we need to copy the Western cuisine and we have to, so that we can support them. So that really had a uh, very deep pain in my heart all the time. To be one of the first person of color in America in 2011, October 4th, to be one of the first person of color in a hundred year history of the book. Unbelievable. To imagine that how it was nothing to do with me, nothing. It was to do with all those people who kept believing in Indian food and kept teaching us. You have cooked for so many famous people, Pope Francis, you've cooked for uh, Prime Minister uh, Modi ji, um, and the Obamas. So tell us about that call you had just before the Obamas were coming in with grandma. So we were doing the re-election campaign for President Barack Obama. So we were doing it at the Rubin Museum of Art where I used to run the cafe. I get a message from Secret Service that uh, within 24 minutes or something, President Barack Obama would be arriving. And you can imagine what happens to your stomach oh, at that no. time. I can't <laughs> so imagine. Actually. I ran to the bathroom, not for anything else, to call my grandmom. And I said, my father is not giving the phone to her. Like, you know, <laughs> he's having his tea. Uh -huh. It's early morning there. And I, 
इस थिंग ऐसे बिजी थोड़ा मैंने घबराहट हो रही है मतलब टिपिकल इन पंजाबी हम सिंग दैट यू नो आई एम रियली गेटिंग नर्वस प्रेजिडेंट ओबामा इज कमिंग शिजिंग हु आई सेड ओबामा एंड यू नो आई एम टोटली लॉस्ट राइट नाउ बिकॉज थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग सो शी इज़ नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग वट आई एम सिंग मे बी आई वॉज ऑल्सो फम्बलिंग टू मच सो शी हर्ड द वर्ड लॉस्ट एंड शी हर्ड द वर्ड ओबामा बी शी शी डि नॉट नो हो प्रेजिडेंट ओबामा वॉज शो शी थर्ड she thought it was pajama i'm talking about pajama instead so of a i'm like i've lost my pajama and it's like she is like on and on about it oh you have to be careful about your pajamas you know and she's telling my father why did you send him you know i can also go and help him i'm like she's not even listening to me there's I'm a like, hangama over pajamas oh, yeah. when you're about to serve the obamas obama so i'm like so. but you know later when she passed away i said that was amazing you she doesn't care for whom i'm cooking for and why am i nervous she she cares for my basic comfort yeah. that i cannot lose anything Aww. and i i really love that story yeah. <laughs> I, i loved it too when i, I read it. it i said that's and really nobody funny. rhymed pajama with obama till then <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i know well when we return we're going to talk to vikas about his films there is just no stopping this man because he makes food and films from his heart more with the cast after the break We're back with Vikas Khanna. We've heard a lot about his food, we've heard about his story, his journey. Now I'd like to talk to you Vikas about your films. I know you have some missions that are very very close to your heart. Uh tell us firstly about those missions. So my first feature film was called The Last Color with India's legendary actress Neena Gupta. Yes. Which is about a widow. And it's not based on real life character but it's based on real life events where in india especially in some parts of india where when the widows have no rights to the family's inheritance yes. uh, to festivals to childbirths they have to wear white clothes and be disconnected and that really broke my heart because i'd seen that similar things happening ganda ma kasam <laughs> गोल्डन <laughs> and to be able to create these majestic stories about these women who are so empowered do you feel like that's kind of your full circle coming back to the golden temple with the ending <laughs> of that of course you're not a failed chef but <laughs> no there were there, 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 there a lot there of were moments <laughs> there were lot of transitions which happened yes, in your life yes. which people try not to talk yeah. about them because yeah. they don't want to be vulnerable in front of people but yeah. i do speak that when you are targeting very high there are chances going to be slipping falling being burnt being buried all happening at the same time mm mm-hmm. now i was at the screening actually of uh, barefoot empress yes i'd like to know about this beautiful <laughs> story our viewers would love to hear i mean what a story what a what a woman <laughs> what a woman tell us a little <clears throat> bit about that so somebody wrote to me on twitter that uh, chef you love these stories there's a new student in a school in chepar which is a village in kerala where there's a 96 year old woman who has gone to school for the first time i was in new york mm-hmm. something intrigued me about the lady who's sitting in a classroom she can she's so sh- tiny she's almost like 3 feet hunchback she can hardly reach the desk and she's sitting with all the kids and learning to study something moved me a lot i went to her hometown and i was the research started everything started and then we went to her town and we started shooting documenting her journey it was about a beautiful the journey. beauty in her about 
Uh, she all her life she was a, a cleaner. She was cleaning streets and temples. And she wasn't even allowed to go in some Inside temples, temple, right? As a yeah. woman. So they were not allowed to perform those rituals, and she always told that women are not inferior. Women don't get a chance. Incredible. And you are also on the board of uh, Leap to Shine. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Education is the key. There's only one key. Anything which I can do or lend hand or support. But Leap to Shine is really amazing. They are trying to get these kids prepared for the next century education, for how do we deal with this whole thing where underprivileged children are getting tools to be educated, to be nurtured, and to be actually not thrown out for their creativity. Absolutely. Vikas, now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about fitness. You were people in People Magazine's Sexiest Man issue, were you? I was. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Relationship between fitness, food, cooking, and why fitness is so important to you. I, I think fitness is very important because uh, you only have one body. I'm in a profession where I have access to eating all day long. I have to be disciplined. Um, I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I always have to keep myself very clean because you know you also represent the cuisine. Any favorite foods? What I is love. your favorite food actually? <laughs> uh, I'm a very, for my, when I'm cooking for myself, you look at my refrigerator, I'm a very simple eater. I don't even eat salt uh, in my own food. Oh. I, I don't eat salt. I, it's always multi-grains with any protein and lots of spinach. Uh, single pot cooking, extremely lazy, but I'm also obsessed. Lazy? I'm also lazy obsessed is with not yoga. a word that goes with you because I'm sorry, but <laughs> that I'm not excited. But I work out every day. It could be biking in the city or it could be gymming or running or swimming uh, every single day. And our tagline is grab your keys to Kismet and seize your destiny. So what are some of the crucial keys to Kismet in your opinion? from your journey? I feel that when the keys do not work on the locks, it just means that you have much bigger doors to search for. They're much bigger locks. And it does not matter. It is going to happen to everyone in relationships, in businesses, in uh, collaborations that you're going to fall. Any relationship from friends to families, it's going to fall apart. It is, it's, good, it's inevitable. That's a circle as the earth circles around sun. There's no question about that. And this is something which is unquestionable. The point is how fast you find the new lock. I'm going to end this show today with a non-traditional exit. Okay. And <laughs> just say that it was a pleasure talking to you because you are a man who sees beyond food to make a difference and an impact in the community. Your journey from Amritsar to the U.S. is full of ups and downs, triumphs and challenges. Yet what marks you, Vikas, is your determination, your kindness, and your authenticity. And I am so fortunate that I got to sit here and talk to you today. I feel the same. I would like to remind our viewers on behalf of myself and Vikas Khanna that it's time to grab your keys to Kismet and seize your destiny. Thank you.